What if I told you that the death of one of America's greatest generals was a lie? Today on the final episode of History and Mysteries, we are going to look at one of America's greatest generals, George S. Patton. Now, if you don't know who George S. Patton is by now, you need to go back to history class, ladies and gentlemen, because you haven't been listening to your history teacher. But, of course, like in every episode, I'm going to give you a rundown. George S. Patton was a general of the United States Army who commanded the U.S. 7th Army in the European Theater during World War II and the U.S. 3rd Army in France and Germany following the Allied invasion of Normandy in June 1944. He became known as one of the greatest generals of all time and also garnered nicknames like Bandito and Old Blood and Guts. Now, a little background on the famed general. George Patton was born on November 11, 1885 to a family with an extensive military background that spanned both the United States and Confederate States armies. Patton attended the Virginia Military Institute and the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. Patton first saw combat during the Pancho, Pancho Villa Expedition in 1916, taking part in America's first military combat, uh, military action using motor vehicles. He saw action in World War I, commanding the U.S. Tank School in France before being wounded while leading tanks into combat near the end of the war. Following the invasion of Normandy in June 1944, Patton was given command of the Third Army, which conducted a highly successful rapid armored drive across France. Under his decisive leadership, to the third uh, under his decisive leadership, the Third Army took the lead in relieving beleaguered American troops at Bastogne during the Battle of the Bulge. After which, his forces drove deep into Nazi Germany by the end of the war. During the Allied occupation of Germany, Patton was named military governor of Bavaria, but was soon relieved. Over, uh, but was soon relieved over his aggressive statements towards the Soviet Union and trivializing denazification. He command he would then command the U.S. the United States 15th Army for slightly more than two months. On December 8, 1945, Patton's chief of staff, Major General Hobart Gay, invited him on a pheasant hunting trip near Spare to lift his spirits. Observing derelict cars along the side of the road. Patton said, and I quote, How awful war is. Think of the waste. Moments later, his car collided with an American army truck at low speed. Gay and others were only slightly injured, but Patton hit his head on the glass partition in the back seat. He began bleeding from a gash to the head and complained that he was paralyzed and having trouble breathing. They soon took the famed general to a, ho to a hospital in Heidelberg. Patton was discovered to have a compression fracture and dislocation of the cervical third and fourth vertebrae, resulting in a broken neck and cervical spine cord injury that rendered him paralyzed from the neck down. Patton would spend the mo most of the next 12 days in spinal traction to decrease the pressure on his spine. All non-medical visitors, except for Patton's wife, who had flown down from the U.S., were forbidden to see Patton. Patton, who had been told he had no chance to ever ride a horse or resume normal life again, at one point commented, and I quote, This is a hell of a way to die. He died in his sleep of pulmonary enema and congestive heart failure at about 1,800 hours on December 21st, 1945. Patton was buried at the Luxembourg American Cemetery and Memorial in the Ham District of Luxembourg City alongside some wartime casualties of the Third Army, in accordance with his request to, and I quote, be buried with his men. Patton was military through and through. Now, if this was just a history lesson, I could end it there, but of course, I'm not going to end it there because this is a conspiracy theory. Now, we get into the good stuff. Bill O'Reilly, who I enjoy reading some of his books. It's a, some of his books are very good reads. Um, 
He suggests that Patton was poisoned while recovering from the automobile accident he endured on December 8, 1945, to prevent him from warning the United States about the imminent danger of the Soviet Union. However, many historians have pointed out that O'Reilly presents no hard evidence to prove that the famed general was poisoned by the Soviet Union. Because if he was poisoned by the Soviet Union, then that would be... That would be very bad, and that would start another war, anyways. Whether he wanted to start it, whether Jer Patton was going to start it or not. However, the theory I'm going off of is the theory is from the diaries of an American assassin, which revealed that American spy chiefs wanted Patton dead because he was threatening to expose American collusion with the Russians. His death has always been a mystery, but sources say that although he had suffered serious injuries in a car crash in Mannheim, Germany, he was thought to be recovering and was on the verge of flying home. Many historian, uh, military historian Robert Wilcox claims that General Wild Bill Donovan ordered a highly decorated marksman called Douglas Bazada to silence the famed general. He talks about Bazada staging the car crash by getting a troop truck to plow into Patton's Cadillac. And then shot the general with a low-velocity projectile. Which broke his neck while his fellow passengers escaped without a scratch. Um, yeah, I did my research on what they meant by low-velocity projectile. Um, the gun Bazada used was an airsoft rifle. I've been airsoft... I I own a few airsoft guns myself, and I love going airsofting. Um, and I know that getting hit with a BB with the with the type of airsoft rifles we have today, it hurts. So um, I'm not sure that today's BB guns would break someone's neck. Um, but the airsoft rifles that they had back then, they were. It, it's very interesting. I mean, he could have... I'm not sure he shot him with a BB because a BB wouldn't have broken his neck. I'm I'm thinking he might have shot him with a rock. I mean, a small rock. I mean, that could have that could have done the job. Um, but yeah, the air sub guns he had back then were were high, were very high tech for the time. Um, they were like shooting a real gun, a real uh, rifle. So yeah, I could see the uh, this being true. Bazada also suggested that when Patton began to recover from his injuries, U.S. officials turned a blind eye as agents of the NKVD, the, vor or the forerunner of the KGB, poisoned the highly decorated general in his room in the Heidelberg Hospital. Wilcox told that when he spoke to Mr. Bazada, Bazada confessed that he had caused the accident, that he was ordered to do so by Gerald Wild Bill Donovan. Wilcox also tracked down and interviewed Stephen Skubik, an officer in the Counterintelligence Corps of the U.S. Army, who said that he knew that Patton was on Stalin's death list. So, it, yeah, it could have been possible that the U.S. government may have turned a blind eye as someone finished off the beloved General in Heidelberg to make sure that, you know, he didn't say anything and cause another war with the Russians. Because that's all we needed at the time is to go into war with Russia after we just finished another war with Germany. That's all we needed. But, of course, we all know that if this would have happened, if the Russians would have poisoned him, then it would have, it would have just, it would have stirred up a lot of it would, have stirred up, uh, it would have been bad. That's all I had to say. But Wilcox also told the Sunday Telegraph, and this is a long quote, so bear with me here. And I quote, Patton was going to resign from the army. He wanted to go to war with the Russians. He, the administration thought he was nuts. He also knew secrets of the war, which have, would have ruined careers. He also added, and I quote, I don't think Dwight Eisenhower would have ever been elected president if Patton had lived to say the things he wanted to say. I think there's, there's so, enough evidence here that if 
I were to go to a grand jury, I could probably get an indictment, but perhaps not a conviction. End quote. Now, I personally think that Wilcox, the Wilcox uh, Bazada theory is true. And I will, I will go down with this. I believe that that the bizarre theory is true, but if you want to believe that the U.S. government covered up the death of the famed general and made it seem like he died because of injuries, then yeah, you believe the bizarre theory. I believe it. I agree that if Patton had lived, he would have. We would have went to war with Russia, and Dwight Eisenhower would have never been elected president if he didn't. His death may have ne- may have been needed in order to keep the peace of another war from happening. His death, though unfortunate, may have saved more American lives because of wo- because of another world war this time with Russia. Do I have your attention now? Because if I don't, then you need to go back and re-listen to the other three podcasts, and then maybe you will believe that what I'm saying is true, or in other that. That a conspiracy theory isn't all about a rumor someone said that makes someone believe it is true or otherwise misinformation. It's all about who covered up what and where and why and when and how. But, however, there are some, some conspiracy theories that I've seen that, yes, I will say... That are not true. I would admit that they are not true. But most conspiracy theories are about evidence people may have found that could lead to a changing of history. Like, for instance, the Billy the Kid thing. If you re-listen to the Billy the Kid thing, the Billy the Kid podcast that I did, then you and I are both in agreement that there is no way he died that night at the hands of Pat Garrett. No way. Too much evidence. Meriwether Lewis, for me... Yeah, I can I can go either way. Um, I believe both sides. I can believe that the famed explorer was had committed suicide, and I can believe also that he was murdered. John Wilkes Booth, to me, I would have to say there's just too much evidence to say that he died. Too much, and now Gerald Patton. I I've been wondering this ever since I started the research on this. I've wondered. What was the United States motive for having the famed general killed? Why would they want a famed general murdered? Was it because he knew too much? Was it because that he wanted to start another war with Russia? Was it because that Dwight Eisenhower hated the famous general? Which is true. Dwight Eisenhower hated General Patton. He thought General Patton was too aggressive with his troops. He thought that Patton was just... Was... One of the worst generals he had ever seen. So what was the United States motive for having the general dead? It's something I've wondered for ever since I started doing this research. I've wondered what was their motive? What was the United States motive for wanting the general dead? And if not, then how, then why would, if you don't want to believe me, if you do not want to believe me on this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you this. Why would, how, I mean, how could a man who was so physically fit, this man, Gerald Patton, was in such great physical condition that he would, that people said that at his age, that it was a miracle of such great condition that he was in. I mean, this man competed I mean, this man competed in Olympics. He created in the in in Olympic Games. This man helped create what we call today as the patents as the patent saber. This man was a highly decorated general. What was I mean? And then all of a sudden he dies, and nobody investigates it. They just you know, oh, he's dead. Close caps it, done deal. He's dead. He died of his injuries. Don't worry, American people. General Patton died of his injuries. No need to investigate further. Um, what? Um, you have your famed general all of a sudden unexpectedly die? And you're not going to investigate it? To me, that is a conspiracy all on its own. Why, why, why would the United States cover up something like this?
General George S. Patton is one of the, if not the greatest American general that has ever lived. And his death will always be a conspiracy. But no one will ever forget him. His philosophy of leading from the front and ability to inspire troops with attention-getting, vulgarity-ridden speeches was met with mixed receptions, favorably with his troops. His strong emphasis on rapid and aggressive offensive action proved effective and helped solidify his image as an American folk hero. For the last time, I'm going to say thanks for watching.